In today's video, I'm going to be uh, reviewing The Mist in the Mirror by one of my favourite authors, Susan Hill. I've read many books by Susan Hill before, and I've got many to go. Um, she's written a lot. She's written lots more books than I, I had realised, actually. Um, but The Mist in the Mirror has been in my collection a while. It was in a sort of double collection along with The Woman in Black, um, which I will um, reread The Woman in Black very soon. But I love Susan Hill, and I really enjoyed The Mist in the Mirror. It is a classic horror or sort of thriller. It's it's sort of a, um, a thriller written in a classic gothic style, that's what I would say. Um, I've seen um, many people online sort of talk about Henry James and, and, and comparisons like this, but it is a classic atmospheric gothic ghost story. And it's exactly what I've been looking for recently, and it really, really didn't disappoint. So, The Mist in the Mirror. I will just start by saying there are some mixed reviews online. I think some people saw the book as sort of anticlimactic. I'm not going to spoil the ending, um, but... I kind of get that. I, I do kind of understand why people might say it's anticlimactic. Um, the ending doesn't quite slap you around the face as hard as some other moments in the book do. Um, but nevertheless, I think I think like I said, classic gothic style. I don't think it's. I think it's a, a, a steady. You know, if you imagine uh, the mist in the mirror like a sort of temperature gauge, that temperature decreases, decreases, decreases ever so slightly throughout the book, until at the end it's kind of frozen and it's just you're left in a sort of bleak state. So that's kind of what, that's how I experienced the book. Um, but a proper, proper chilling, terrifying at times ghost story. Sir James Monmouth is a explorer. He's an explorer. Um, he's travelled the world. He was raised in, a in Africa and India um, and he lived in the Far East and he's, he's travelled the world. Um, but he returns to England after years abroad. He wants to sort of track down and trace and, and document the life of another famous explorer, Conrad Vane. Um, I think that's a brilliant name, Conrad Vane. But anyway, he's following in his footsteps and he's trying to track him down. And he's gonna write a sort of biography of this guy. He was a sort of, uh, Conrad Vane was a sort of childhood hero of James Monmouth. And as he's following in the footsteps and, and documenting and researching, he's turned off at this task. He's, he's turned away from this task. He's warned off from this adventure, this mission. At every turn, people are saying, be wary, turn back, go back, give it up, be aware. And and despite these many warnings, he continues. Um, I'll talk about why I think he continues in just a moment. But some people have criticised that, where they keep saying, how silly is this? It's like the person in a horror film running upstairs, you wouldn't do it. But there'd be no book. So I kind of put that to one side. But he finds himself lured by this whole Comrade Vane character and sort of drawn... And after a while, trying to research Vane, he realises that his own lineage, his own ancestry, his own birth and history is tied to Vane in some ways. And, and he becomes more compelled to follow that line of inquiry than the Comrade Vane sort of story. Um, but the two can't be undone. They are they, they come as a pair. So, yeah, I think he's he, watching him deteriorate mentally and, and, and his sort of rollercoaster of emotions where it's like he becomes quite comfortable at times and he's taken in by sort of um, acquaintances and looked after there's times when he becomes quite fearful and, and considers abandoning the project altogether and watching him dip in and out of you know watching his mindset shall I pursue it is this too dangerous do I give it up that was really quite interesting to me um, it's so atmospheric I think what Susan Hill does brilliantly in this book is uh, setting we're talking about old parts of London, the Thames and back alleys and pubs and inns, it's very misty and foggy and wet and cold and, and bleak, beggars sitting on the street and then you're in a sort of a centuries old school where the dormitories, the boys dormitories are described as being medieval um, and then we're in rugged rural England where rolling hills and sheep and little cottages and finally a, a, a mansion, a dilapidated decaying mansion and so really setting is 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 what makes this book one of the reasons well worth reading and you know something i haven't mentioned yet are the ghosts the spirits that the, the manifestations that he sees um he is stalked and haunted at every turn by a ghost of a boy and this the appearances of this boy i think are absolutely chilling um you'd have to read it yourself um to to, to know why but the way it's described is absolutely disturbing this boy is wretched and it's, it is awful. Um, I pictured him almost like um, the two children in A Christmas Carol, um, emaciated uh, sort of 
reptile like it's just it's just uh, very very disturbing but i'll leave you with um a little bit from the book about comrade vane um so as he's researching him he, he employs the help of a, a professor and here's how that conversation goes so he says um Others have found themselves drawn in, uh, drawn in by it, magnetised as they were in his lifetime. Comrade Vane was an evil man, Monmouth, evil and depraved, and he used the power of wickedness, a dreadful power over others, the innocent, the naive, the immature, the foolish. I have read and I have heard some of the stories and investigated them to my own satisfaction. It was enough. He was cruelty personified. The stories are of that and of corruption of the innocent as well as more ordinary, unpleasant human traits, spitefulness, deceit, brutality, debauchery, viciousness, cunning. It began when he was a boy. So that's a little bit about Comrade Vane. Um, I really would recommend The Mist in the Mirror by Susan Hill. Give it a go if you're looking for a decent ghost story, a very atmospheric, chilling ghost story. Superb. All right, I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching um, and I will see you soon. Take care.